Good morning, everyone. I um, hope everyone is having a great morning so far. It is a nasty, rainy uh, tornado watch day again here in New Jersey, so I think I'll probably end up trading all day. There was news at 8.30, and there is news again at 9.45, I believe. I'm pulling that up right now. Um, yeah, 9.45, we got final PMI. Um, and then OPEC meetings all day, and we had none. Farm payroll change uh, dropped at 8.15. That came out a lot higher than expected. Um, tomorrow we have unemployment claims at 8.30, and we have FOM speakers. Today, Fed, Chow, uh, Fed Chair Powell is speaking at 12 o'clock, so you definitely want to take a lunch break today. Um, it's 9.21. I am uh, tired today for some reason. I don't know, but I've got my account set up. I've got the copier set up. I am going to trade my TickTick account as usual with the two contracts. Um, I'm looking for a profit of 14 ticks on my first contract, and I've got a runner for 40 ticks. I'm breaking even at 15. Um, I do move these stop losses around, you know, you can't have a stop loss set at a certain tick number every time, you know, that's going to be a variable. I mean, it doesn't, it won't work the same. I mean, there's no way you can just stick to 17. You know, what if I entered right here? <clears throat> I only wanted my stop to be like 51 for a short, um, then I don't need 17 ticks. And if I was entering like right here and I'd want my stop to be like above 63 because of this level here, you know, I might do a little more. What I don't do is risk more than $300 per trade. If I can't get into the trade with a risk that makes sense, a logical stop loss level, um, that's going to cost me less than $300 per trade. I pretty much don't take it. And when I say 300, if it's like 320, 330, you know, that's not a big deal, but I, I really prefer not to go above like 250, but my, my max limit is like 320, 340. Um, you know, sometimes you just have to give it a couple extra, like ticks of leg room. Um, if your stop is too tight, you're going to get stopped out all the time. So, um, I just wanted to throw that out there. So it's only 9.23. I have switched my tick charts to sessions, so I'm waiting to see what the gap is. We still have a huge gap from yesterday on ES and NQ. Um, let me pull over the profile for ES really quickly because um, we have gaps in the volume profile from yesterday. So you see here we've got this node here. We pulled up to that um, last evening, and then we've come down. I expect we're going to tag value area low, pull back and maybe go up. Um, but you are going to fill in this minus development here at some point. The same thing goes here. We've got a, a big old minus development right here and a prior day high level, um, excuse me, a prior day low level here. Um, this might have been, uh, it might have been Thursday. I don't know. It's, I'm a little mixed up. So this is yesterday. So this is Tuesday. And this is the prior day, which would be Monday. So this is Monday's low. Um, I can see the gap fill up there. There is an old naked POC up here. So this is definitely a level of interest. Uh, we still have this white line up here. We haven't tagged. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be watching that. If we start to go up, those are the levels. We'll be looking to fill the gap and to um, fill in that volume profile. Right now, the candles are red, so we seem to be in a downtrend. Um, I'm just going to go over the indicators on my chart really quickly. I have volume profile on this. This is my trading chart. This is a very small brick Renko. Well, actually, I'm using Orenko bars. I have these guys set at 4, 10, and 14. Um, if you don't have access to these bars, you can go into the video description. There are links to my Google Drive and I've got all of the indicators that I'm using except for volume profile um, in that drive and the Orenco bars are there. They're free to use. I don't um, have anything like, I don't have any paid services or any paid like indicators. Or anything. I don't, everything on my dis, uh, Discord and my YouTube is free of charge. So um, these are my, uh, this is where I enter my trades. I've got a modified Keltner channel here. 
Um, if you're not using TradingView and you want to use this, um, here are the settings for my Keltner channel. I've got it at a period of 40 and a 0.2 multiplier. Um, I find that to be the, the best um, setting for this for the purposes that I'm using it for. I'm not taking reversal trades. I'm really a trend continuation trader. So this works well. Um, I've also got a trend magic here and I've got this set at uh, 20 with a multiplier of 0 0.15. Um, smoothing is at seven and the multiplier is at 100. So you can, I'll leave that up there a second. You can screenshot that if you wanna have them settings. Um, my trend magic is a paid one, uh, but I do have a free version in my Google Drive you can use. So, um, and now that I'm thinking about it, I might have saved the templates with my, my uh, paid indicator on the Google Drive. So you can just delete that indicator for the trend magic and add the free version that's in the Google Drive. So, um, and then I've also got a volume moving average here set at 10. So this is the VMA right here. It's just a NinjaTrader ind indicator. I'm sure they have it on whatever platform you're using. Um, in addition, I've got a purple line that you see moving around here. That is my uh, price line. It just shows me where the current price is. And I have daily pivot points on here. Um, so you see S1 is a support one, support two. It also gives the resistance levels. These are the Fibonacci um, levels from the pivot point. And again, that's the daily pivot point. And then I've got volume profile um, on NinjaTrader. There are free versions of volume profile on TradingView. I'm sure other platforms have access to that kind of tool. Um, you need a lifetime license on uh, NinjaTrader to access the volume profile tools. I do have that. I purchased NinjaTrader long ago. Uh, when I first started trading, like that was the first purchase I made was the platform. So. I know a lot of people don't purchase it because it's free with your prop accounts, which totally makes sense. I wouldn't have bought it either if I was getting involved in this back then when there really weren't that many prop accounts. Um, I use this uh, really for uh, trading ranges um, and, and just as part of my market analysis, you know, like I just said, we have a gap in the volume profile. I want to know where the value area high and low are. I use those four levels. These are my like support and resistance or supply zone levels, whatever you want to call it. Um, I don't go looking for candles to make like supply and, and, and demand zone level. I don't do all of that. Like the, the volume profile is the most easiest way to do that. And it's based on price and volume, which is better, I think, than trying to find engulfing candles, you know, and just, no. Nah. Um, I don't use ICT or anything like that. If you're found my channel and you want to trade ICT, I really don't know anything about that. And I don't personally have any interest. Um, I'm looking for a simple strategy with a high win rate. That's easy. Um, and that's what I have. So I use volume profile to do my levels that when you see these white lines, they're just volume profile levels. I've just marked the prior day, uh, volume area, value area high and low. Um, and then I've mark maybe the POC level, whatever logical levels I see. And I look for gaps. I would say I'm a gap and volume profile trader. Currently, I'm in a challenge to scout my way to a prop firm profit. I have modeled this scalping system after the Alpine trader. Um, if you don't know who that is, you can search Google for Alpine trader. I thought he was like a scam artist. I think he's legit now. Um, he won't share a strategy. You have to come up with your own, but his premise is, you know, in and out and collect your profits and get paid. Um, you know, and I think he's onto something because for a long time I was trying to be the perfect master trader. I wanted to know everything about every indicator and be technically precise and, you know, here he comes and he's not worried about all that. He's just worried about getting paid. So, I mean, in hindsight, you know, I was going about this the wrong way. So the market just opened. We have a little gap down. Interesting. Um, I'm just going to extend the gap that I've already got going on here. I haven't even marked the high and low of the day yet. I'll get to that. Um, so anyway, I'm, I'm going to test out his theory. So far, so good. I'm up $1,400 on my evaluation. I started three days ago. I'm getting my profits and I'm getting out. I'm up 1485 on this 100K one. 
and I'm, I'm starting this evaluation for Apex. I've got a 250K account. I'm going to do five times what I um, trade on my tick tick. So I'm doing 10 contracts on a scalp basically. Anyway, the market just opened. I don't enter at the open. I'm going to wait a little bit. Something's up with my Discord. Um, I'm going to wait for it to shake out for a little bit. And like I said, there is news today at 9.45. So 10 o'clock um, a.m. I'm going to wait for the news probably. Uh, so my setup is very simple. I am looking for for a short entry to be valid for me. Um, I'm just taking the scalps at this point. I'm swing trading a little bit on ES, but for now I'm just doing the scalps. Um, if For a short trade to be valid, first of all, the number one rule is this candle or brick here needs to be red. Not blue, not orange, not green. Um, it could be white or red, I'm sorry. Um, Actually, I'm going to take off this engulfing candle indicator. And let's just stick with red or green. Um, so for a short bout to be entry, this candle uh, brick must be green. Um, and then over here, I also have an ADX indicator on here with a line at 20. Usually if the ADX is below 20, that means we're possibly in a chopping market. Um, or a trading range. So I just have that on there just as a, a reference. I have a trend magic on here um, and I also have a VMA. Um, I'm not using these for, I use these for my swing trades. They're not relevant for the scalping setup, which is what we're doing today. Again, we want to make sure right now we have a lot possible long entry coming up. The bars are green. Um, on the MACD down here, we had the blue line is above the red line. We want that to be blue above red for longs and red above blue for shorts. We want our trend magic to be green for a long entry. It should be above the Keltner channel. Um, and then 10 VMA should be above the trend magic here. And then the bricks should be closed above all of the above. When you see the bricks, in and out of the Keltner channel or the VMA in and out of the Keltner channel or the trend meter in the Keltner channel, it's indicating a trading range or a chopping market. What you're looking for is a nice separation, a nice separation. And the bigger, a wider the separation, the stronger the trend. So you see the Keltner channel is way up here. Then we got the trend magic and then we've got the VMA. So this is a good entry right here. Provided this bar was green, this um, dotted red line is above the blue line. This is a good entry right here. We have another good entry right here. These white bars can be used as signals uh, as well. They are engulfing candles. Um, we would consider that like a trap on a tick chart. So um, this could have been a good entry. This candle is green. Um, this candle is technically meets no it doesn't meet all the rules the trend meter is below the calendar channel uh, I also see we're moving into the POC and we don't want to take a trade into a level here uh, we want to make sure we have room to get at least five to seven bricks that's my profit target So I've marked the gaps on here. I'm going to switch my chart back to um, just the 24 hour chart. I switch them in the morning just so I can see the overnight gaps and then I switch them back. And if you want to use a session chart like that, um, you just would change it to CME US index futures RTH is just the New York session. Um, and then you can, when you're done with that, just click it back to use instrument, instrument settings or ETH works for the 24 hour chart. I see this setup here and I'm not taking it because we're right on to the POC here. I'm not interested in trading into that.
what is the height? See what we got going on here. One eight three four five two five. I'm just marking the high and the low. Generally, um, and if you're a follow Al Brooks, which I definitely do recommend you do follow him, um, he trades in the five minute chart. And by bar 15, he says there's like a, you know, a 90% chance you've seen the high and the low of the day. So I always mark the high and the low coming into the session to see which way we break. Um, Right now we are in a, our candle is red and we're coming off a red candle. I see the weekly, I have the weekly expected low plotted right here. So I'm thinking we're going to come down and tag that. Um, this green line here is the, is the daily expected low and this green line down here is the um, sigma level, you know, and like 98% of the time we close between the sigma levels and 68% of the time we close between the daily expected levels. Um, this is potentially a setup. I'm not going to take it. Um, I want to for a second there, but we're pushing into VWAP here. I see we are bouncing up and down off of this POC and we're also in a red candle and this is the monthly volume profile levels. So I see we're kind of floating around on the monthly POC. Uh, I'm just going to wait. I only need a couple scalps. I've got all day to get them. I don't need to be in a hurry to trade. I never trade off of the the open. Um, it's, you know, that's a gamble. It's not a strategy. Um, I mean, I don't personally have a strategy for the open. Some people do. I like to know and have a, a confirmed direction before I really engage in the, in the market. Look and see it's going down. So, um, I'm going to let it shake out, let the news shake out. I expect we will probably range around a little bit until the news. Um, that's usually how it goes. You can see here um, on my trading view chart, we are very sideways on NASDAQ. This is the one hour chart. ES is very sideways. Even Dow is sideways. The dollar is sideways, but moving down, which tells me we might move up. Um, we usually go in the opposite direction of the dollar, but... Again, we have news at 10, so I'm just going to wait for the news. The um, the jobs number was, you know, good. We created a lot more jobs than they expected, but I don't know if that's going to be good for um, the market necessarily. Sometimes bad news makes the market go up and good news makes the market go down. So I'm just going to wait uh, for PMI to come. I'll probably wait a good 10, 15 minutes. Um Unless I see something really juicy, but right now I just see chop and I don't, I don't want to get mixed up in chop. You know, as a scalper, you need a really high win rate because I'm risking a lot more than I'm gaining when I make a trade as opposed to when I swing trade and I'm getting like, you know, at least one and a half, sometimes six times my risk. So I can afford to be a little more, you know, ambitious there. Um, I can mess up a lot. I only need like a 48% win rate. So I, but on the scalps, no, I'm, I'm risking like twice as much as I gain. So I need to be at a very high win rate. So it's important that you don't take trades in this kind of choppy stuff here. You know, when you see the VMA is going in and out of the ribbon, it's a do not trade zone. Okay. Like right here, you could have taken that trade. Um, 
and met the rules. You have a little bit of room to the um, POC. You probably are definitely going to tag it. You know that. So you can pretty comfortably say you're going to get your scalp. Like, I wouldn't fault anybody for taking that trade. Um, certainly no swing entries. But, like, in here where, no. Especially when you see the bricks are in the counter channel. That's a no, no, no. You want your bricks well clear of that Keltner channel or coming off of it, you know. We do in a trend pull back to it, like here, here. The reason I have a runner is the reason the reason I have a runner is because I don't I don't like missing all these big moves, you know, and if it takes off, at least you have something in the market, right? Um yeah, like here, you can see pull back to the counter, pull back to the counter, pull back to the counter. If we get very far from this 10 VMA, we are most assuredly going to come back to it, snap back to it pretty quickly. Yeah, you can see it's right in the middle of the bars. That's chop. So I tried to create a strategy that would have a high win rate and would really help you or help me trade the trend and avoid the chop because that's where, you know, a lot of traders fail is you um, have an amazing strategy that works great in a trending market, but in a trading range, it's terrible and you lose. And the market's more often than not in a trading range. I do something completely different in a trading range. I trade volume profile. So, um, you know, coming into this morning, I would be trading yesterday's volume profile, which here's value area high, here's the POC, and here's value area low. And I said, if you watched my video last night, you know, when it opened, I would wait for it to come below value area high, and then I would wait for it to pull back, and I would enter a short. And my short entry would have been like right here at 303. I would have targeted the POC first, that's 84, so I would have gotten about 20 points there. And then value area low down here, we have not made it yet. We would have come back and stopped me out. I could have re-entered here. Um, I got another 20 points to the POC. Um, and I would still be in this trade if it's going down to value area low to make the full rotation. And then um, in a trading range, you want to buy low and sell high. So I would wait for us to come below value area low. <clears throat> And then come back and do the same thing. I would wait for a pullback. So I'll wait for us to... I never take the first entry in because they always come back and get you. Um, so I would wait for us to pull in here and then pull back and for that to become a support. And then I would take the second entry and I would target, you know, the POC. Well, at this point, I would probably target value area low for the current session first, then the POC and then value area high from yesterday. Um, I used yesterday's levels until lunchtime or until the current profile exceeds the previous one. And I do post the volume profile levels into my Discord um, at night for you guys if you want to mark the levels from yesterday. So in the morning session, you really just need yesterday's levels. Um, and you know if we stay in between those levels, this is why it's important to mark them. If we stay in between yesterday's volume profile levels, then we're in a trading range. So then you'll be able to visibly see that. And if we exceed, you know, if we go above yesterday's value area high and we continue up, we're in an uptrend. And if we go down below yesterday's value area low and continue lower, we're in a downtrend. So using yesterday's volume profile levels are, is the best way that I know to spot a trading range. All right, so we have about 10 minutes till the news drop. Um, I am going to break this video up as best as I can into little sections with hopefully I can load everything. Um, I'm also going to be joining. Uh, so I, I have a Discord. If anybody's interested in joining our Discord, I don't publish a link to join because I don't. it's a small group of us. And I don't want a bunch of spammers and nonsense going on in there. So and I'm very selective about who I add to Discord. But if you are a sincere trader and you're interested in joining us, you can send me an email, you can leave a comment here, um, and I can send you a link to join. We do have some new members. If you're watching my videos and you're in the Discord, you know, welcome. Please say hello to us. Um, I'm getting ready to join the live stream on my Discord. Uh, one of our members, Vance, who has a really cool strategy, um, is live streams. 
and a bunch of us join and it's just like a it's almost like a chat room we can all chat in there so you're gonna hear us talking um from that when i'm recording here so uh i can't mute the microphone because then i won't be able to talk in the chat so what you hear, um, you'll hear me talking to them and them talking to me, um, and you know we'll be discussing all of our trades and that kind of stuff. So um, we'll just let it play. I'm probably going to clip the video after each trade I take, or I'm going to try to. I also try to um, take screenshots, but these scalps happen so quickly, like it's hard to. Uh, I mean, they're, they're over in seconds. But uh, we'll we'll give it a shot. Let me move my. Uh, now over here so we can see it on one screen I can do that right there and let me make a note to go and fix those templates because I, I think I did save them with my paid indicator Again, if you're interested in trading with my charts, I do have free templates all loaded into the um, Google Drive that's linked in my video description. If you're just finding this video and you don't know anything about trading, I did create a little series um, about, you know, for uh, new, new traders, beginner traders. Um, and there's just three small videos. Uh, I mean, I feel like they're helpful. The best thing to do is just don't be overwhelmed. Just get in there and practice. Like you're going to be in here with paper money uh, learning how to trade. So it's it's not, you know, stressful. I I can't even imagine my life without trading anymore. Like I I live and breathe this stuff. All right, but I'm going to get on this Discord now. So I am going to be chatting with those guys. And I apologize if there's any... Uh, colorful language. It's probably going to be from me though. Good morning, guys. Man, so where's your law level at up there? Is that 183.50? Yeah, around there. Am I yelling? Yeah, I, Am I, I don't yelling know how, at you? No, I don't know how nuts it's going to go at 9, but uh, yeah. I think that I'm going to wait for a short above previous day high. And that'll mean that the law is probably filled by that time. Yeah, I, I can see that. I mean, we have a big gap in the volume profile to fill all the way up there. You're talking about ES or NQ? I mean, both are the same, oh, both, I think. Both, really. Yeah. Uh, I'm waiting for the news, too. It's pretty choppy right now. I can see on the hourly chart, everybody is just going sideways. It's like they're waiting, too. Everyone's holding their breath this morning. Well, I felt as if the yesterday's high didn't go high enough. And of course, it took all day to get there, right? So I just don't think it's quite gone enough in order to kick in the uh, Fibonacci to the downside. Right. I see my daily chart right now we're, for NQ. We're hovering on the monthly POC. We have not tagged out the expected low for today, so I do think we're going to go lower, probably on the news. Well, I think if I'm correct, what we just bounced off of, right at the, right at the bell there, I think that was FOMC, was it not? FOMC, uh, where we took off from there. I don't know. Um, I don't keep track of those levels. Um, I, yeah, I only use the volume profile levels. What we're bouncing off of is the POC on the monthly volume profile at 182.78.75. But we still didn't hit that weekly expected low, and we're so close to it, I do think we'll hit it, and that's at like 181.86. So I'm thinking maybe... Well, that, NASDAQ is really... It cannot get above that 24-hour VWAP. No, I know I see it. I think we're going to go up today, too, though. We have another gap down this morning, so. But I think we'll maybe 
pop down and take out those levels before we head up. So I'm expecting I, I all the news to get an, to get the low of the day. I do find that when I'm thinking about my 50% Fibonacci's, they somehow align with what you guys talk about with fair value, fair value gaps. Well, I don't trade ICT um, or fair, fair value gaps, but I trade the volume profile gaps. I think they're probably very similar. ES has like a really big gap. I'll post a picture into Discord. Hold on. I'm even thinking 270 might be a, a place. 5270 in uh, ES. I just posted it into the uh, stream photo channel. I've got a line here. Uh, let me see where we are here. Uh, 5283 is a level of interest um, for, for volume profile. And I've got 5307 still marked. These, these are levels we have to go back and revisit that we haven't for volume profile. And on the downside, I've got 52.36 on ES. But if you look at that picture, you can see the clear gap in the volume profile. Like we're gonna come up to yesterday's uh, low for sure, but I think we're gonna go above it. But first we gotta take out that weekly level. Well. Put it this way, I, I will be much more comfortable taking longs if we at least take out that purple line first because I know we're going to hit it um, and I'll be worried about a reversal the whole time if we start going right up. So oh, we got like two minutes left for the news. So your law line lines up pretty well with the 20 EMA on the daily chart, I just noticed. It's also the, uh, I think it's pretty close to the weekly VWAP too. Oh, you plot the weekly one too. Um, Mike Silva does the weekly VWAP on his, I like his show. You ever watch Figuring Out Money? No, I never heard of it. Woohoo. Now that is quite a move. I guess we're not going down to my weekly level, huh? Uh, let's just wait and see here. Oh, it came much lower than expected. What I'm expecting here is going above previous day high, and then maybe for the rest of the day, we might slowly take the whole thing out again. Pump and dump.
really looks like that law is going to get hit. So in the in the NQ, I'm just going to leave it because I would rather short. I think. I'm waiting. I'm going to give it a couple minutes to shake out. I mean, it's probably going to be a pump and dump. The YM moves so much. When you talk about gaps, if there's gaps, that thing's got to fill. Oh, yeah. The uh, PMI came out at 51.4, was expected at 52.8, um, so that's not good. It kills me how bad news makes the market skyrocket, right? Uh, they're full of tricks, that's for sure. There is a huge gap on the dollar down The dollar is crashing down. So we're through supply zones and we're going to have to cr in my opinion, we got to create another one. Well, we just tapped the pivot point, and that was your wall level, right? So. We're also back at the daily open. If we get above the daily open and pull back and it becomes support, I'll be looking for longs today. So at this point, I'm looking for a long entry. I think we're going to go up and fill that gap. We've got a ways to go. It looks like we're going to go up and fill that gap. Uh, we've got quite a ways to go. We just pulled back to my daily open line. And when I said, usually when we pull back to that, we are in a trading range, which we clearly are in a trading range. Um, so what I'm going to look for is for us to come above have a cell zone here and pull back and for this to become support and we continue higher. Um, or I'm looking for us to pull below it and pull back and for it become resistance and we go continue lower. Um, my candles, my large term, my large book candles are red, uh, green, uh, so I'm good for for longs. I'm not going to buy into the pivot point. If you did enter that, um, you know, it, it worked out this time, but it won't always work out, so it's better to just hang tight. I had a much better entry on ES. I just wasn't looking at it. All right, so we're above. Now here's our pullback. Really wanted to get to 70.50 in reverse. Order, order submitted. Way. I'm going to put my stop below the pivot. Order submitted. I'm getting FOMO. <laughs> FOMO is a real thing. I'm going to go right down here. It's a little higher than I like to be, but that's all right. I'm going to try to swing this guy a little higher. Order canceled. All right, we got the scalp. We are at break even. Um, the reason I pulled my stop down here, I wanted to be below the pivot point and I wanted to be below 50 because if we had pulled back there, we would have pulled back to 50. Um, right now I'm below 60. If it takes off like a rocket, I'm in business. If not, it's going to come back and stop me out. My safe stop would still be below 50 here. But I'm not going to risk more um, than I should on this trade. 
the whole point of the runner is for if it takes off on you that you get to capitalize on some of that movement um and uh, otherwise you get stopped out at break even plus one so it covers your commissions so I'm going to keep my stop. I'm going to move it up a little bit, just below. I want NQ in the 390 area. I'm long and I've got a runner. Um, I got my scalp and now I got a runner, which just looks like it's about to get stopped out here. I can't get too crazy with my runner because I'm in an end of day calculating, I mean, intraday calculating evaluation with Apex. So I can't let that runner run too long. Unfortunately, uh, that's one of the drawbacks of Apex, you know, who I've been mad at, but I've decided to give another shot to. Order canceled. And we got stopped out. So we were up to 1300 on that Apex one. Um, that's not good. So that's almost a thousand dollars a drawdown right there. So that's a problem. So I guess I can't get greedy on my runners. Um, and what intraday drawdown means is that um, my, my profit went up to 1300 and I didn't take profit. I let it come back and take my stop out. So now I'm at 15. So 15 minus 13 is counted against my drawdown, like as if it was a loss. Let's see if we pull back to 50. Order filled. We're even possibly here. I gave back way too much on that runner. I forgot I was in an Apex evaluation. <laughs> Damn it. I was up to like 1300. I ended up getting stopped out for 519. This prior day low is the definitely the target. So I hope everyone had a great day in the market today. Um, I had a tough day, as you see by my Christmas tree P&L here. I did bust my elite evaluation. Um, I'm going to have to wait for that to reset. That the like 70% off deal is gone. So I think that one will reset on the 14th. Um, I'm not paying $75 for it. So um I also busted my Apex account. That one is still on sale, so I did reset it twice. Um, and I ended up on the new eval here. I was trying to get it to like 10K and uh, it didn't work out that well. I was trading crazy today. So anyway, I ended the day 2400 green on that one. I am negative 1185 in my uh, funded account. That's not great. Um, I started to trade at lunchtime. You know, I usually go out and do DoorDash at the uh, lunchtime hour just to get me out of the house, but it's really bad weather here, so I decided to stay home and um, get crazy. So uh, I didn't follow my rules today. I was picking tops and bottoms. I was trying to trade very heavily. To f I hate doing evaluations to get those evaluations done. So I took one trade, which you're going to see... Um, what you did see, and I was, uh, I had about eighty dollars on that PA account, and I should have left it alone because I didn't have any setups the rest of the day. I I was forcing trades. Well, and then I took a loser, and I didn't like that, so I was trying to uh, correct that loser, and I wanted to hit my goal, and I didn't follow the rules, so that's what happened. So my daily max loss for that account is twenty five hundred. So half of that is my hard limit for the day. So when I hit that 11, actually, I think I was at 11.65. Um, no, I'm at 12.65 when you count commissions. So that's, you know, a little more than halfway. So that's, you know, that's my hard limit. So I stopped trading that one today, thank God. Uh, so I ended, and then I ended up, um, I decided to add two more tick ticks. Um, I can have three accounts, three funded accounts with them. So they had a 75% off deal. They sent me an email. So I decided to get the other two. So I did get the 50K bundle. Um, so, and I did pass these. Um, the goal was 3,000. So I finished both of them. Um, 
this was this was the first one I got and then I got the email for the bundle so I, I missed on two and I got two which was fine because I can only have two more um, so I've got the three coming I did get an email from them right away even before the market market closed it does take them a couple days to send you everything to get started so I'll have those two PA accounts coming so I'm back down to uh, only 220 in profit from 1500 here that's you know that's how it goes sometimes you know you make mistakes you just gotta kind of learn from it and go um, I mean I feel like I'm at a point where I shouldn't have to learn from it anymore but there you have it uh, I do want to share a picture of this trade I took today I had a nice swing trade today. Um, I had a good entry. I took it. I uh, took it with six contracts on that um, 250k account. I had it up to like nine grand. I mean, and then I just kept trading it too heavy, and then I busted it. But anyway, this was a really fun trade. I got in here. I had a good entry here. I got in, and uh, rode that thing all the way up. I got I think almost 200 ticks, 150 ticks. Uh, so that was a fun trade. Unfortunately, I didn't get to record it. Um, I just didn't record my afternoon session. I had a hard time yesterday trying to uh, load such a heavy video um, and edit it and get it loaded. So I, I broke this up in little chops. Um, I did include the, my first trade, uh, which you saw, but the rest of it, I don't think it's worth showing anybody. First of all, it was bad. You know, it, it was set a bad precedent, um, and I don't want to do that. I have had a couple people reach out and tell me that they didn't trade today because they didn't have setups and that my strategy was working really well for them today. Um, three people actually, so I'm very happy about that. I'm glad it's working for people. It probably would have worked great for me today if I would have followed my rules too, but uh, what are you going to do? Um, so, okay, I'm happy to th that I'm going to go forward with all three of the tick ticks. I'll eventually get that elite done. I'm not too worried about that. And, uh, I've got like a 90% off coupon code. It'll just renew and reset at the end of the month or on the 15th of the month. Um, and I think I've got enough going on right now. So we'll just deal with these for now. Um, and then the Apex account I have on uh, Tradebait so I can trade it with the Tic Tic accounts. So all this will be cleaned up tomorrow. I should be left with my PA, my Apex and two more PAs um, probably by Monday, I would say. I remember it took a little bit to get them set up before. All right, so that's enough about my progress today. Um, the lesson in that is, you know, do better. All right, here are the daily expected levels for tomorrow. We have an expected range of 47 points on ES and 243 points on NQ. I don't uh, trade with the Russell, but it looks like 30 points there. Nothing too significant. Today we had an inside bar. Um, it was a nasty, nasty day today. It looks like we're about to start to go up. Um, I also see that we have a naked POC here at 184.1675. Maybe we go up and hit that. And I'm sorry, 184.16.75 is the naked POC. Um, and then 446 is value area high. I'm just looking to see what it will be to break this candle here and it would be around 455. So, I mean, we could go up overnight and break the top of that. Uh, value area high for today is 18446.75 and value area low is 18331.25. Uh, the profile is pretty trading range-ish, you know. Inside bar is a trading range. We didn't exceed the range for today. We went up, we went down. We didn't, we almost got to the bottom of that bar, but we didn't go up. I'm thinking we're going to go up tomorrow, but we'll see. So uh, the profile looks pretty clean. Levels on the way up 18650.50. Uh, and then 18,500 would be my next like level. It looks like up 09 here. I have a line. Prior day low and prior day high are starting to form on my charts. They should be on yours if you're using my charts. If we break above yesterday's high and we pull back and it becomes support and we continue up, we're in an uptrend. 
if we do not, if we come up to that area, and maybe we pull up a little bit, but we come back below it, we're either going to reverse or be in a trading range. So that's your clue. Alrighty, I can see, um, oh, the daily open is 1834225. Oh, no, wait, I'm sorry, that's the wrong day. My bad, cracking up here. I need to make it a little bigger. Hold on there. One eight three eight eight point fifty for um, NQ. All right, on to ES. The daily open for ES is fifty two seventy one. I can see we opened up with a gap here. You see the gap here. The more we go up, the bigger that gap's going to be. Uh, we still have a gap up here, we didn't fill. So it was a gap up on the open at 6 o'clock. Volume profile levels. I posted all of this in Discord, so if you're in the Discord, you can just go to the channel for it. 5280.50 is volume area high. 52.76 is the naked POC from today. And 52.60 is value area low. We still have 52.44 down there. We didn't take out yet. Um, we're smack in the middle of um, that Tuesday's high and low. Yesterday's today's an inside bar, you know. So that being the case, you know, you want to see if it's going to break out of this range here. This is the bigger range. But if we get above value, I mean the prior day high right here and we pull back and it becomes support and we continue up then i would say we're in an uptrend i don't i thought it was today was really weird the news came out today and it was not good for the economy and usually bad news makes the market go up so i don't know and then powell was talking so i don't know what he did to upset people here but then they rebound it you know so it, it just was an up and down kind of weird day news on deck for tomorrow is unemployment claims at 11 30 and then we have FOMC meet uh, speakers again at 12. So I plan to be out of the market by, you know, we should be good on the open, normal market. And I plan to be out of it by like 1130. I got this really nice email from uh, Elite, you know, saying my account's been liquidated because I violated the daily. I was just like, I was trying to be careful. Um... But I guess I wasn't careful enough. Like I, I was only over by like five dollars on the daily limit, not the. I didn't bust the account. Like the, uh, da the daily loss limit is what I hit, not the actual account limit. I always forget about that. Uh, but they sent me a nice email and they say, you know, this this shit happens to everybody. No, no big deal. Your account will re you can either reset it here or it'll resume. Um, it'll reset itself when it when it renews. So. We'll worry about that on the 14th. Um, that one takes a while to get a withdrawal from. The TickTick -tick accounts you can withdraw right away from. So that's pretty cool. So I'm more focused on them. Let's get those guys to pay out. Uh, so I've got plenty of room to recover my P my PA account. You know, I just need to follow the rules. I'm going to go look through the trades today. I had a lot of trade entries this morning that I didn't take because they really weren't like... They were up in here, and I just didn't like how far up we were. That kind of made me nervous, you know, especially when I see, I see that. That means a reversal. Um, look at that run. That's such a nice run. There we go. You know what? I don't even feel like going through all that. I think I did it in the video earlier. So um, I hope you had a green, great green day today. Um, I plan to do better tomorrow. And uh, let's make that money tomorrow. It looks like a lot of people were smart enough to stay out of the market. Or if they didn't, they tried traded according to the rules and they did a better job than I did. So I'm glad to see that. Hey, so I just logged in and uh, recorded my, you know, post-market video and I shared the levels and I was getting ready to close out and I decided maybe I'll take a, 
a trade on my Apex. So I switched over to my Apex account and I see here that I've got an order sitting, a buy order. Um, that shouldn't be here. And this is the issue I have a lot with Apex, especially when you're using the copier. I was not using the copier on this account today, so I don't know why that's sitting there. Um, but this has happened to me before with Apex on funded accounts. I had like 10, what, 250K funded accounts and I was on vacation trading. I went to bed. I woke up. All of my accounts were busted. There were floating orders around like this one. Um, so it's really important and I failed to do this today. You always want to right click and flatten everything and right click and cancel all orders. And unfortunately that's still stuck there. So I'm going to have to email customer support. If this happens to you, like take a screenshot, record it, um, you know, protect yourself because it sucks when your accounts get busted. You know what I mean? Um, especially for like some technical area. I just think Apex has a lot of glitchy stuff happening. Um, so I'm going to take a screenshot and send it to my favorite uh, customer service agent. See if he tells me I'm uh, trying to defraud him again. Jesus. All right. I just wanted to share that since I saw it happening. That. Um, I will see you guys tomorrow um, in Discord or in my next video. Bye.